Good morning, my name is Eddie and I'm an operator here at Central Wastewater Reclamation Facility. Uh, we treat between 13 to 18 million gallons of wastewater every day. So today we're gonna be doing plant one, which is where we just walk around and we're doing our predictive maintenance, looking for any abnorm abnormalities, uh, checking the auto samplers, walking our BNRs, making sure all our motors and aerators are working properly taking the sludge blankets and making sure everything's in compliance. I'm gonna head over to VNR and I'm gonna isolate the clarifier. Ready the gate and isolate the clarifier so we can come Twelve percent big. Strongly. You need to be careful not to get it on you. Understand where you're flowing to that one. You get this on your on your clothes that you come to church clothes because they're holy. We we clean the clarifiers twice a week just to ensure uh, we don't have a lot of heavy growth with algae. So if we didn't do this, there would just uh, there would be algae hanging everywhere. You have to stay on top of the cleaning the clarifiers to ensure the filters work properly. Flushable wipes, yes, they may they may flush, but they don't break down like toilet paper. So they are a major cause of issues for us. We are at Headworks. Uh, this is the Headworks where all the sewer comes into the plant, and then this is our these are our uh, step screens. You can see trash in there. But then those are almost all flushable wipes. And then and so it's actually taking it out of the waste stream as it's coming through. And then it'll go oh, collect over here and then into the garbage can. And then it goes to the dump from there. And then we go to... So from the step screens, it goes over to the wash press. And you can see... So as it comes from the step screen, it comes over. If I took the cover off, you'd see it. It falls down in here and there's a screw that turns and pushes it to the uh, dumpster on the side. So whatever, whatever you flush eventually comes here, whether it's supposed to go down the toilet or not. And then these are our grit chambers. So it comes through the grit chamber and then you'll see every so often, it looks like dirt and it's it's part of dirt that gets washed into the system. So we're trying to get rid of anything uh, inorganic really before it starts into the process. When we're on the, uh, doing our shifts, we rotate assignments each day so today I'm what's called plant one operator. Uh, and what I'm doing is predictive maintenance. So predictive maintenance is different than preventive maintenance. Predictive means we're walking around and we're listening for something that, that doesn't sound right or we're trying to predict something that's gonna break before it does so we can fix it and not have, maybe lessen the cost of uh, repair. First, I'm making sure that it's mixing. This is a mixer. So it's stir, there's a big paddle at the bottom and it's stirring this constantly. And that creates the biological uh, breakdown that we're trying to achieve. So I'm listening, just using five senses. So we don't wanna do unnecessary maintenance, but we wanna prevent anything we can. 
said they don't like Justin Bieber around here. All the faucets say no Bieber. I believe that's don't drink. So it's it's pumping the air in. It actually helps add oxygen into the uh, into the flow. So, and this is where we're removing ammonia. Once it comes into here, the sludge settles to the bottom, and that's our whole point of this: is removing phosphorus, nit uh, nitrates, and ammonia. And then once we're doing that, we're trying to clean the water for reuse. We call it reuse, but it's really for industrial purposes. It's not for potable or anything like that. So this is the RAS WAS stations is what we call it. Uh, RAS is uh, reactivated sludge. So again, coming out of the clarifiers and then these big pumps uh, pump it back up to the top and it starts all over again. And we use those, those good bugs uh, to repeat the process. And if for some reason we have plenty of bugs in the plant, then we waste it. And these that's why everything is color coded. So brown is waste. So these are pumping it and then it's gonna pump the, this waste over to uh, these two tanks over to the right of us where uh, then we take that the wasted bugs and we actually turn it into a fertilizer product so this is our filter area once it the water comes from the uh, clarifiers to here i'll pull a cover off and you can actually see what they look like they're rotating disc filters So these are our rotating filters. So the water's coming in through here. Uh, it comes in the channel. It goes through these. These are, it's actually a paper material, very fine. And then it has spray bars right here. And so as it gets dirty, the computer will uh, tell it to kick, you'll hear them kick on. And so as it rotates, the spray bars actually, the trash gets collected inside of the disc and it goes down and it washes it down into, there's actually a tube down in there. Now we'll go down to the contact chambers. We filter the water first, and then we have our chlorine storage tanks over in this uh, containment area, and we have pumps in there, and it pumps the, and it comes out, there's a feeder right here, and all the water that, that's come through the filters is coming out right here. The chlorine goes in there and then it goes into con the contact chambers. I believe it's 15 million gallons uh, that it, they can treat each contact chamber. It used to be 11 and a half. So we have two, we have two on at all times pretty much because of what flow we're getting into the plant. So it would be around 30 million gallons that we could treat with just these two. And we have six of them. So it comes through here. This is side two. So sludge tank two is coordinates with it. It goes through a grinder. It's called a macerator. And it's just a bunch of teeth. So any trash that does get through, it's chopping it up even as fine as it can. And these are our sludge pumps. They pump it up and it mixes with polymer. So the polymer makes the sludge bind together again. It goes into these tanks over here. They're called flock tanks. Uh, from there, they come to the, the screw presses. It literally squeezes the water out of the solids and sends the water down the back down the drain and the solids it sends to this big thing right here. This is a wet cake bin. And so this just fills up. And if you went to the top, there's a hatch, you can see it. And it's just sludge. So from there, there's a, the there's a pump on the other side, it pumps it around and it either goes outside to a truck to go to compost or it goes to the dryer. And these are the dryers. So this is dryer number two. 
it comes into dryer number two and I, approximately 150 to 180 degrees. And as it spins and makes its way through, it gets progressively hotter and it dries the, the product out. Uh, and when it, by the time it reaches the exit of the dryer, it's just a granular product. And this is the finished product. Thank you so much for uh, taking time with us today and learning a little bit about wastewater treatment here at Central Wastewater Reclamation Facility. Hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. Thank you.